Your company's future success demands agile, flexible, and resilient operations. I'm your host, Daphne Luchtenberg, and you're listening to McKinsey Talks Operations, a podcast where the world's C-suite leaders and McKinsey experts cut through the noise to uncover how to create a new operational reality. We recently recorded an episode of MTO in which we explored the future of robotics and automation with experts Annie Kelker, Ujwal Kumar, Mark Thierman, and Etienne Lacroix. The discussion highlighted the growing interest in robotics driven by AI advancements and the need to address productivity and labor challenges. Today, we're delighted to have Annie back with us for a bonus episode where we'll explore a bit more about the potential of this innovation for general purpose robotics, the technical challenges, and some of the ethical considerations for their implementation. Welcome back, Annie. Well, excited to be here. What a delightful conversation with Etienne, Mark, and Ujwal. Yes, absolutely. And as you know, as we have this bonus episode, I'd love to first ground ourselves. Let's go back to the beginning. Can you explain what we mean by general purpose robotics and embodied AI? What are the key capabilities they bring and how does that differ from traditional robotics that we think of today? Absolutely. There is a lot of excitement about robotics, particularly about the potential of AI and robotics today. When we think about general purpose robotics, it refers to machines that are designed to perform a wide range of tasks across various domains, rather than traditional robots, which were optimized for a single function. So think of robots that are cognitive, and they can adopt like a human worker at a factory that can do multiple tasks like picking, inspecting, painting, rather than a single application, like an industrial arm, doing one job repeatedly at a very high volume. And when we think about embodied AI, it's really the intelligence that enables this adoptability. And it combines things such as perception, decision-making, as well as physical interaction within the real world, including interactions with humans and collaborative actions between robots and humans. Oftentimes, this is learned through a trial and errors or simulation perspective, unlike traditional robots, which were very much rule-based and required structural environments. General purpose robots can handle that ambiguity, navigate complex spaces, and learn new things. Great. And let's bring it then even further into specific use cases. So I'm thinking healthcare and agriculture. How do you see these innovations driving real value in those places? And can we already start to point to some real use cases? Yeah, and the excitement around general purpose robotics is their ability to span domains by taking critical building blocks of technology from one domain, such as automotive manufacturing, to another, such as healthcare or agriculture. And in those industries in particular, we see general purpose robotics as being poised to fill critical labor gaps. In healthcare, as an example, there are companies such as Diligent Robotics with their Moxie robot that has been helping hospitals with logistics, freeing up nurses for more time focused on patient care rather than moving documents or objects required for operations. In the agriculture context, you have companies such as FarmWise which are using AI-powered robots to deploying in weeding applications. They help reduce the use of pesticide and labor dependencies. And what sets these examples apart compared to traditional robots is their adaptability. These robots interact with humans, they perceive their environment, they decide, and then they act in dynamic, often messy environments. And this is really the shift that's making general purpose robotics impactful for healthcare and agriculture. Yeah, fascinating to see that already kind of working in practice. So what, Ani, would you say are the main technical challenges as you develop these innovations and start to put them to work? And how are those technical challenges being addressed? Yeah, there is a lot of work being done in academia and industry on addressing some of the technical challenges around generalization of the embodied intelligence within robots, defining the right safety use cases and safety behaviors, making sure that the simulated environments in which these robots often learn are 
good approximations of the real world and bridging that sort of sim to real gap. And finally, making these robots energy efficient so that they actually have cycle times where they can be deployed usefully. So think about these general purpose robots. They are far from controlled environments like the traditional robots. They are in unpredictable settings. They need to have cognitive intelligence to understand the environment, understand how the environment might respond to what the robot's doing, and understand how the robot needs to interact with its environment, whether it's people or other machines. And so there are lots of techniques, whether it's using large-scale foundation models, similar to what we saw with ChatGPT, or techniques to bridge this sort of sim to real transfer that are being advanced by companies like OpenAI, DeepMind, NVIDIA, that are really pushing the envelope when it comes to generalization. And moreover, there is significant focus in academia, particularly around developing the safety use cases for these robots. Yeah, very, very interesting. And so when it comes to safety, you were talking about that before, Annie. And then, of course, there's the ethics that should be considered when you're integrating these general purpose robotics and embodied AI into everyday life. How can we ensure that they're deployed responsibly and that there are guardrails to be put around both the development, but also how they are used in these real life settings? That's a great question and an important concern for all of the leading players and researchers in this space. So beyond safety, there are three other core concerns it's around bias, privacy, and displacement. For example, if a general purpose robot learns from real world data, it may inadvertently absorb certain societal biases or act unpredictably. And that's why you have institutions like the Partnership on AI and the IEEE calling for robust auditability, human oversight, human in the loop, and open data sets. Responsible development of robots means designing with transparency, ensuring the AI systems can explain their decisions, and creating regulatory frameworks that balance innovation and accountability, particularly as these systems now start entering healthcare or education and even public spaces. Yeah, fascinating. I love those examples, Annie. And as you're talking there, the thing that keeps coming to my mind is the question around energy and also battery storage. And what is the time that a robot will have available to them with the energy that's there today? And as we're starting to ask these robots to be so much more intelligent and really drive and use generative AI, which we know has high energy consumption, how is this area, this arena, thinking about that? We have multiple companies trying different approaches. So the traditional general purpose robot deployment is so energy intensive that these deployments are anywhere between 30 minutes to two hours of runtime. Now, that's not really suitable to be a factory worker that works in eight-hour shifts. So you have companies like Menti Robotics that has experimented with swappable batteries. And you have other companies that are thinking about uh, tethered robots for specific tasks. So they can, you know, when in particular the robot is performing tasks requiring high energy draw, they're actually tethered to a cable and are charged rather than truly just powered by their batteries. So I think we have a ways to get there, but there are many companies that are innovating on this front that gives me optimism that we're not too far out. I love that. So to bring some of those technical challenges to life, I was speaking with a leading researcher in the robotics space, and we were talking about an element around forward dynamics prediction. So think about a robot that's being deployed in an agricultural context to pick strawberries. Not only does the robot need to identify what the strawberry is, it needs to detect where it's actually going to grasp the fruit and how it's going to cut the fruit. Moreover, the robot needs to understand in its attempt to grasp the fruit, how it's potentially going to displace it and then be able to respond to this displacement, which is a thing that humans do just intuitively. You just learn that as you go to hold objects, sometimes those objects move or they roll, but the robot needs training data and techniques to be able to learn that, which continues to be a challenge because a lot of that data doesn't exist. Another way to think about the technical challenges is how we interact with our environments. 
we often interact with our environments through gestures or voice. And so companies, including Figure AI and OpenAI, have started to work towards foundation models that combine vision, language, and action. So that way you have the ability to communicate instructions to general purpose robots who then are able to interpret and then translate those into actions in the real world. And they're able to reference. If you ask a robot to pick up an apple, it can look around its environment. It knows what an apple is. It knows where to find it in its environment and then take an action against it. All of these things are there, the bleeding edge of robotics research today that we will soon find in commercial scale deployments. Very interesting. Annie, we could talk about this for hours and a day, but this is really just intended to be a good, strong primer. So let me finish with a final question for you. As you've been explaining some of these use cases and bringing some of these stories to life, what do you think is the most promising future development when it comes to this field? And how do you see these technologies evolving over the next decade? I'm very excited about the future of robotics. I think we are on the cusp of robotics becoming truly adaptable and as capable as in the real world as we've seen it be in the lab. And I think the foundation technology that accelerates it is really the integration of foundation models within robotics. So think of the open AI chat GPT moment. I think we're about to have something similar in the robotics domain that will be transformative. Coupled with advances in AI, we're seeing a rapid acceleration in sensing technology. We no longer only have to rely on cameras. We actually have haptic sensors and touch sensors that give robots a better perception of the environment around them. And the plethora of startups and mature companies from the likes of Tesla to Boston Dynamics to Figure to Agility to OneX that are taking this charge on leave me with a lot of optimism that over the next decade, general purpose robots will move from novelty to necessity, especially in sectors where there are significant workforce shortages and a need for business resilience. And the future of robotics isn't about replacing humans. It's about augmenting in a way that is scalable, intelligent, and allows for an elevation of the work that humans do. Fantastic. Thanks so much. You've been listening to McKinsey Talks Operations with me, Daphne Luchtenberg. If you like what you heard, subscribe and stay tuned. Another great episode starts now.